Greetings, Orvillians across the galaxy. I'm sure the known galaxy, that is. Everyone in the galaxy knows what the Orville is. They love the Orville, but there are still people in the outskirts, in, in, in the faraway lands that still need to be told to watch the Orville. They, they've heard of it. They're not sure if they should check it out. They should check it out. And luckily, more and more people every day are joining the cause and joining us in this beautiful universe. What is going on, you guys? Today is a very special day. This is a Talking the Orville watch party day. This is our second one. The last one went pretty well. And, and it looks like uh, uh, we're going to be making this a weekly thing as we count down. Though we don't know what the start point is for the countdown. But we have 36 episodes of 35 uh, uh, as of today, more episodes of the Orville to watch before they make that season four announcement. And I know a lot, for a few months here, once once I found out, and some of us uh, 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 heads of the fandom uh, in the inner circle found out that season four is a go. It's just going to be. Uh, we don't know when they're going to start filming it, but it is been. It has been picked up for a fourth season. Um, uh, for a couple months there, the fandom was was pretty happy. They were re rejoicing. I didn't hear a lot of uh, of people on the internet said, "Oh, I wish they'd make more uh, Orville." And too bad they canceled it. They've never canceled the Orville. Uh, it has been renewed behind closed studio doors. Uh, some of us are in the know that it is coming back. We just don't know exactly when. Uh, and eventually, they will be making the announcement. That the that the Orville has been picked up for a fourth season, uh, and as soon as Seth MacFarlane is available uh, from all of his other projects, and when he's allowed to, uh, when he's done enough with, with his contractual obligations, he will be allowed to step aside and go over into a studio and start making some Orville episodes. So those of you who are sad, uh, don't be sad. There's more Orville coming. Seth MacFarlane said it himself publicly. That there will be more. He said it on the Mike Henry podcast. And, and another announcement before we start this watch party is one week from today, fingers crossed, I never know until I know, one week from today, this channel should be monetized again, which means uh, I'm going into monetization mode, which means I'll be making a lot of changes to this channel. I'll be uh, moving all the shorts over to the new Talking the Orville shorts channel. Uh, because the shorts really are the whole purpose of the Orville shorts that I make is to promote the show and get people watching it. And boy, has it been working. Uh, I see people all the time online saying, hey, I've been watching these Orville clips. I'm going to watch uh, I'm going to watch the show or I have already started watching the show because of all these clips. That's what we want to hear. We want to hear the fandom is getting larger and, and, and uh, the Orville universe is getting more deeper embedded into people's hearts and minds. It is happening. And yes, Brian Dawkins, it is showtime. Mark Lawrence, how's it going? Showed my nephew the first six episodes yesterday. He loves it. Yes, season one, uh, uh, such a great season. Lots of people uh, really look back and, and have a lot of love for this season. At the time, the first season came out, um, Rotten Tomatoes gave it the Rotten Tomatoes critics, as I I put them between my fingers here. Critics uh, uh, hated the Orville, but all the fans absolutely loved it. The critics gave it like 40% or 50%, but the, the fans were giving it like 95%, 100%. Just goes to show critics aren't really, you know, they're, they're not what they're cracked up to be. They're just people on the internet trying to get attention. We know that because when season two came out, all the critics gave it 100% certified fresh. Because they knew that's what the people wanted. Because that's what they're doing. They're trying to get attention. And they got them attention. Anyway, that's a conversation for another day. In fact, we have had that conversation many times. And I'm sure we'll have it again. Um, but I have no uh, fears of the Orville ever being badly rated again. Uh, the, the, the critics know better at this point. Uh, Chris Gamer 90. Yeah, these shorts are definitely paying off. They are. I mean, they're. They're paying off for the Orville. I mean, I, I don't get anything for them at all. Uh, but I love having them because they are making a difference. And so I will be moving. As of sometime this week, I'll be getting rid of all shorts 
and moving them over to talking the Orville Shorts channel, which is just for Orville Shorts, and then all the the long form uh, Orville stuff that I do, and the live shows and the interviews and all that stuff will be right here as per usual. And do not forget the end of the week this Saturday, June twenty second, my birthday. Uh, we'll be doing uh, the very first episode of the Orville Spotlight, which is a live show where we will be inter- um, interviewing uh, one of the guest stars from season three of the Orville, the episode Twice in a Lifetime, uh, Renee Pizzotta. Oh, just got a messenger. Hold on. <laughs> uh, we'll be interviewing her about her experience being in the episode Twice as a Lifetime. She played the uh, realty agent trying to sell a house to Isaac and Charlie. Fun, fun scene, fun episode. Uh, but we'll talk about that this Saturday with you guys asking all your your questions. And, and of course, I haven't set it up yet, but the the preliminary um, talks are that the union, uh, where leaders of the Orville fandom are, get together every month, will be coming together again Saturday. I believe it's July eighth. Uh, to do another live show talking about season four and also talking about some of our favorite episodes and moments uh, of the Orville. And you guys will be telling us about your favorite episodes and your favorite moments. And we're just going to nerd out about the Orville. Let's get closer to getting this watch party party ready. We're going to be watching uh, season one, episode two, episode command performance, uh, which uh, just like Brian Dawkins said, this is the episode where we learned that uh, the, the Germans have been drinking beer for breakfast for hundreds of years. Though I have had German people tell me that's not true. I don't know. I kind of go with the Orville on this one. They seem to know a lot about the universe. Pranakasha Productions, I'll be sending you an email uh, this week uh, with a little special invite to see if you want to join us for the, the Union episode coming up in July. Margot B., one of my favorites. Command Performance, this is the episode that really solidified to me that the Orville was it. The Orville was, was is what I was looking for in science fiction for all these years, all these, at least a decade and a half, wasn't getting my fix, and the Orville came out, and I'm like, oh, this reminds me of some classic sci-fi, but it's new. It's newer stuff. It's the Orville Classico Nuevo, you guys. Uh, <laughs> all the progress shows love to be on the show as long as I'm not in Vegas. We'll work, we'll work it out. I, I, I'm going to schedule it. If you're able to make it cool, if not, it'll be the next one. But we will get it figured out. So what, how this watch party is going to work is I have the episode Command Performance queued up on the screen here. And uh, you can kind of see the bottom of the, of the screen below me. And what you'll be able to see on the screen is the very bottom portion of the episode. Because there's copyrights. So we don't want to violate copyrights. Then I won't be able to get remonetized fingers crossed uh by the end of the week but you will be able to see all of the subtitles of the episode so if you're not able to queue up the episode press play at the same time as the rest of us you will be able to keep track of what's going on in the episode uh on the screen here with the subtitles and i'll be giving out some facts about the episode while we watch it as well as some comments and you guys will be doing the same ah it might not work then, uh, 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 Matt, but we'll talk about it either way. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a tweet. All right, so are, are you guys ready to watch Command Performance, Season 1, Episode 2 of The Orville? We will all press play at the same time. We will do a countdown, and we will do it uh, on three. We'll press play. When you guys are ready, you just let me know. James Billy, I'm on the second of The Orville. Deck says, hey, I like that you just changed it to Deck. I love it. Uh, <laughs> how can the Orville be disliked? We all know that it is great. Yes, we do. And I have found that people that try it out and watch it, they all end up loving it. All right. People are ready. George is ready. Chris Gamer, gotcha. James Billy, second watch. All right. You're going to get that second watch. Deck is ready. All right, you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna get the play button ready, and it'll be on. I'm gonna count down from three, so it'll be on one. We will all press play. Ready? Here we go. Press play in three, two, one. 
There it goes. And it should be, oh wait, hold on, let me add it to the stage there. Just made it. This is the episode we also learned that Mocklins uh, lay eggs. We don't know exactly how it works. We don't know if Bordis has a vent, like a chicken has a vent or a bird has a vent. Uh, <laughs> this is also the episode that Bordis is introduced to Kermit the Frog, a very important figure uh, on the Orville, a figurehead. And this episode... Now, of course, this episode is the second episode of, of the season, but it was originally supposed to be episode four. Uh, the second episode was supposed to be uh, If the Stars Should Appear, which is one of my favorite episodes. But it, If the Stars Should Appear didn't um, uh, test well with uh, test audiences because the test audiences are so freaking smart, right? Uh, such a great episode. So they exchanged it with this episode, and they also filmed some extra scenes for this episode to help it fall into the timeline. And this episode was directed by Robert Duncan McNeil, who you might remember as Tom Paris on Voyager. Let me press back to the actual stream. Yeah, that's right. Kermit is our guy. Kermit the Frog. Permitting space. Bad yoke. Uh, yeah, it's trying <laughs> trying to do some humor with Bordis, but as we know, Bordis doesn't quite get jokes, does he? Even though he is very funny on Mockless, as we have learned. Yeah, it really seems like these watch parties are working out as far as... Uh, the way I have it set up, I'm not being flagged or anything like that. Because YouTube will flag you anytime, no matter what. They don't care. They'll make up a new reason to flag you. So it seems like they're okay this time. I've covered up enough of the screen. I'm not playing the audio, uh, which I wish I was because this is the theme song, the original theme song to the Orville, which is a beautiful song. Dun, 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 dun. Now, if I turn on the audio, you might be able to hear it the microphone. I don't know. But if I turn on the audio, you would instantly get flagged. Then this live stream would be taken off air because that's how you two be, you guys. Ah, George Garcia, where are you getting your fun facts uh, uh, for the watch party? I, like most of uh, Orvillians that make... Uh, Orville content get a lot of our information from the Orville fan wiki. Uh, the Orville fan, uh, Orville.fandom.com slash wiki slash command performance. I'm, I'm on the command performance page. They have every episode, every season, every character, every alien, every planet, everything, uh, information about everything about the Orville. Very well done. Very thorough. This episode supposedly takes place in maybe September, October of the year 2419. Now, of course, for those of you, well, I'm sure all of you probably know, this is the Calavon Zoo episode. Not only are we introduced to Calavon, who we never see again, who I suspect we will see in season four, especially in the episode... Um, uh, Sympathy for the Devil, which will be in season four. We'll see some prequel versions of the Calavon. Hopefully they don't change it out for another alien race. We need some Calavon. Isn't that funny? We see, we find out that uh, Coke still exists. Probably cocaine as well, but Coca-Cola still exists in 2419. I want eggs now. No, the word Orvillian was actually created by production. Uh, the the Orville production were calling their fans Orvillians. And so uh, we picked it, you know, we found out and we started using it. We've tried to come up with other terms, but nothing really fits as well. I'm not the biggest fan of the word of the term Orvillian, though I've come to love it at this point, but I was, nothing else fits as well as that. Now, of course, we got two uh, guest stars 
here playing Ed's parents, Bernie and actually let me scroll down. I can't remember her name. Let's see. I got it right here somewhere. Oh my goodness. No, that's not that. That's other guest stars in this episode. But his parents' name is Bernie and I got it. I got it. Hold on, you guys. There's a lot of information. We go through every act. Jeffrey Tambor and Holland Taylor are Bert and Jenny. Bert and Jenny is, is who we got here. I wonder if we'll ever meet Ed's parents for reals. I mean, this turns out to be a facade. These are fake people. Diverticulitis. Uh, and uh, like I said, this episode is directed by uh, Robert Duncan McNeil, famously Tom Paris on Voyager. Uh, Seth wanted him to direct, but he gave him three episodes, Star Trek episodes to watch in order to get uh, an idea of the tone that he's looking for in this episode. One of those, um, two of the Voyager episodes, I actually have them right here. Got a lot of trivia on this site. Oh, it's here. It's here. Just, uh, of course, he wanted, uh, we think, the, two of them we know, the third episode we don't know, but we think it's the menagerie where uh, Captain Pike is put into uh, a zoo by the Telosians. And, of course, the Telosians are the big-headed, big-brained aliens. Calavon are kind of big-headed, big-brained. They put you into a facade, a fake situation, which is what they were doing with, with uh, Pike. Like the highly advanced Telosians, diminutive aliens with huge brains, tricked the USS Enterprise with holographic simulations of, fami of familiar humans. Hmm, that just happened right now. The highly advanced Calavon, uh, diminutive aliens with big brains, tricked the USS Orville with holographic simulations of familiar humans in the ship. What? Another episode um, that I linked to back when I reviewed this episode years ago was the the Twilight Zone episode. People are the same all over, which is the episode where uh, Roddy McDowell is a is an astronaut. And they they crash land on Mars, and the Martians seem like you know really nice, amazing people, and they trick him into being in a zoo as the human exhibit. And the fact that this episode was like this, the fact that it had kind of a Twilight Zone vibe going on with that zoo uh, really made me fall in love with the episode because I'm a huge Twilight Zone fan. Let me see if I can find the names of the Voyager episodes. There's just so much information. Hold on. I, I got it. You are high. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there's so much information here, you guys. Hold on. I need to really put together, write a, uh, write a uh, commentary on these episodes, record them, put them along with the episodes time them out so that people can download them, listen to them while watching an episode and really get chock full of some good, good uh, BTS information. Let's go to This episode originally aired on Sunday night. The first two episodes of the Orville uh, uh, aired after uh, football, the big football games. Oh gosh, I can't find it, you guys, but I, I eventually will. My wife just got home. I can hear her. She's probably gonna walk in here, forgetting I'm doing a live show, which fine with me. 
All right, here we go. I got it. Oh, also, FYI, okay, Robert Duncan McNeil was asked to direct for the Orville in this first season. He said yes. At the same time that year, he also declined to direct for Discovery. He preferred to direct for the Orville. Very interesting, don't you think? Okay, so the, the Voyager episodes that he was asked to, that Robert Duncan McNeil was asked to study for this episode is uh, Body and Soul, Voyager episode, and Someone to Watch Over Me, Voyager episode. And then, of course, Star Trek, The Menagerie from the original series. This uh, uh, These scenes of Bordas brooding his egg were filmed uh, and added on to this episode in order to... Uh, Great continuity for the next episode coming up about a girl, which we'll be watching uh, probably next week. The goal is going to be to watch at least one episode of the Orville a week. What day and time? I don't know. I applied for a job recently, uh, a regular job. So <laughs> if I get that job, I have to work whatever that schedule is. And so from that schedule, I'll figure out when I can uh, do these live shows. But we'll definitely be doing uh, bigger live shows almost every Saturday. I kind of carved out Saturdays telling everybody, hey, don't ask me to do things on Saturdays unless I really have to. And if I really have to, you got to tell me a few weeks before. Because I try to uh, schedule these out uh, a few weeks to a month ahead of time. This was so funny. This kind of... This scene kind of endeared me to Alara. I love the whole idea of her trying not to throw up, having a shot. She's nervous. Been dead a while. Okay, I have it paused and breezy. Easy. It ain't easy being breezy. Deck says, I've had, uh, I've just had an idea. And a family guy, Kermit, mentions that it's pigs in space. Now, what if there are aliens in the Orville universe? What? Pig aliens? We kind of got French bulldog aliens with the Choctaw. What's up, Trigger? How you doing? Ah, oh, Trigger. I'm not your favorite YouTuber. What about PewDiePie? It's PewDiePie. It's hilarious. We got this sci-fi show, and it's it's pretty damn high concept sci-fi show. People didn't realize it at this point. Uh, and Alara's totally like just almost like it's her first day of, of, of work, except for it's her first day of being in command. And she's super nervous. Yeah, good job with that thing. That's hilarious. What's up, Ann Bell? How you doing? Yes, Captain Catan is a good leader. I hope we see her again in season four. They brought her back in the end of season two. They brought her back at the end of season three. I would like to see her at least once in season two and uh, season four, the upcoming season four. And I hope it's a little bit more of just more than a cameo. I hope it's an actual, she helps us with a mission. I want her and Tala to team up. So bad, you guys. Give her whiskey, Salayan whiskey. Now, they've had some Salayan drinks throughout uh, the Orville series. And we know that Salayan chocolates are incredibly dense. I wonder what their alcohol drinks are like. Uh oh, grunting is happening, guys. Trigger says, too long. LOL, we need more Orville, Orville, and your videos to follow. Oh, I can't wait. My my goal, because all this YouTube treachery over the last year where I've been demonetized and barely able to get by, and then other bad things happen every once in a while. Hopefully it'll be remonetized a week from today. Start the, the trail to get back to where I was where I have time to put out the really hardcore videos that I love putting out. 
I already got some or I already have a, a great Orville video I want to do, but it will take some research uh, and a little bit of time. And then to make it, it won't be so bad. But the, the research to get all the info will take a little bit of time. But I want to do a uh, the Orville Ted crossover video showing every single Orville actor or uh, actor that is or uh, uh, production team that is also working on the Ted series. Because there are a lot of actors from the Orville over on Ted right now waiting to come back to the Orville, of course. Thanks, Aunt Bell. I miss making them. It's just I do not have time. I do, do not have time, unfortunately. But someday I will have time because I, I, I know I know what I'm doing. I'm on a path. I just have to be remonetized. And then, of course, I, I applied for uh, the job that I applied for. I hope I get it. I have an in at the place, so fingers crossed there. And so then I'll be doing the regular job, I'll be doing the YouTube, talking the Orville. Talking Orville is my favorite. And then um, some side work here and there. And I should be doing pretty dang good, you guys. I just want to do pretty dang good so I can talk about the Orville. I can say so much more than I'm saying. Let's uh, see. I applied a week ago, and the guy told me it takes a couple weeks usually. So hopefully this will Hopefully, and maybe this week. Maybe this week I'll hear about it. But it'll be perfect. It'll be perfect. And it'll give me the weekends off so I can really hit the tubes hard. The tube use. Thank you. You know what I found out? Um, that emoji that you used, Dan Bell? Um, I just found out about that. You know, a lot of people think it's praying hands, which it might as well be. But it turns out it's actually two hands doing a high five. That's what it was designed for. But people, you should use emojis however you want to use them. This is when we learned that Star Wars exists in the Orville universe. Claire said she'll be your uh, uh, Alara's Obi Wan. You know, and Alara's like, huh? Laura only watches Slane films. I remember watching this for the first time, seeing Ed wake up, and I'm like, oh, what's going on? Oh, I never noticed that Kermit before. There's a Kermit right there. They wake up, and this is when I instantly thought, oh, Twilight Zone. And there's Earth. Well, it's supposed to be Earth. Earth in the or they haven't talked about it much. They've only alluded a little bit about the history of of uh, the Orville universe. How how Earth even got into being a utopian society. Earth had to hit rock bottom in order for uh, to turn humanity around. They've only alluded to it. I know all the facts now because I got the I got the advanced copy of the guide to the Orville. Uh, it, I've learned so much. There's so much I know about the Orville now that other people do not know. I wish I could talk about it. I could talk about it in, at the end of September when the book comes out. Uh, Deluxe Edition, link is in the description of this video if you want to order that. It is worth it. Oh, man. The information is 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 just so vital for a fan, for any sci-fi fan. It's a better story than Star Trek, Star Trek universe. I'll tell you that right now. But I, I know why. I mean, of course, they have a lot of plants because they want to, you know, embrace nature, this, this, and that. But I know why. I know why they go that route. I know what they were thinking. I know what year. The Orville universe technically started the thing that started the world off in a direction to lead to the Orville universe. And it's something you're aware of, too, but I can't tell you what it is. I know what, what year the Orville started being built. I know what year it was commissioned on its first mission. 
I know exactly when the union was created. I know so many things, you guys. No, I'm not on a diet, but I'm also not on a eat too much junk food type of thing. What I'm trying to do is get more exercise. I eat pretty okay, but I do not move around a lot. I did a... Um, Yesterday, Father's Day, I decided to, my mom needs one of a room in her house painted. So I uh, signed up my wife and I to go over there and start painting. Uh, we were both not looking forward to it. And I said, no, this is going to be good for us to do a project together. And though we were dreading it, in the middle, we were both like, you know what? This has been a, a, a good thing. This sucks, but doing it together is great. Which is kind of what Ed and Kelly go through. They're like, this situation sucks, but doing it together is great. Did they mention yet in this episode, uh, Ed, the last time he got high, he was afraid if he didn't stop moving, he would freeze in place? Because that story is actually from Seth MacFarlane's real life. And he added it to the character. That's why he doesn't get high anymore. Because the last time he did, he was afraid <laughs> that he would, uh, if he didn't uh, keep moving, that he would freeze in place. And so he's waving his, his arms around like an idiot in a public in a public place, in a public situation. Oh, no, yeah, I'm not playing the, hey, Michael, uh, yeah, I'm not playing the, the, I'm not showing the full episode on the screen. I have to cover it up or else YouTube will take this live stream down. That's why I set it up so that the subtitles can be shown. I do have insider knowledge, thankfully. I'm so grateful to production to, for bringing me in and, and telling me things. They don't have to do that. In season one and season two, I had to do a lot of digging and figuring things out to figure out all these things that were happening. And I was right pretty much 95% of the time, uh, things that were coming up, uh, especially with season two. So they finally just said, Evan, let's just bring them in. Yeah, Michael, unfortunately, yeah, there would be all kinds of co copyright stuff going on if I showed more of the video. I would love to show the full video. That'd be great. Trigger says, are you the, an admiral for the union? LOL, you know too much. That's what they said. I know too much. And I said, well, it takes a lot of digging and obsessing on the internet. Finding something that doesn't look like anything and applying it to my knowledge of other things I know and then putting two and two together. It was hard. Michael says, I do love the show. Have the actors been to cons before? Oh, yeah. They're actually... They go to all kinds of different cons around the world. They just got back from a con in Germany. There's a couple cons going on. Scott Grimes and, and Adrian Palicki, uh, they're, they've are they done a bunch of cons recently, and there's another one coming up that they're going to do. I can't remember where it's at. But, yeah, they do cons all over uh, the world and uh, the United States, especially now because they're, they're trying to do a soft promotion of the show because they're not allowed to say, hey, it's been renewed. They're not allowed yet to give the official information that the show's been renewed for a fourth season. They want to, but I think studio contracts and all that stuff doesn't allow them to do it right now. So they're trying just to give a little illusion. You know, they're trying to elude a little bit like John Kassar, executive producer, one of the main directors. He just posted uh, a Norville thing talking about it would be great to be uh, directing season four right now. A lot of them do stuff like that. They they, they kind of mention season four and the season of the Orville without actually saying that they they've been renewed. They've been picked up. Yeah, it's not official. Uh, it hasn't been made public uh, yet. We're waiting for the studio announcement. They probably. I'm hoping they'll announce it by September to help promote the new upcoming Orville book. 
that's coming up, uh, written by Andre Bormanis, uh, put out by Dark Horse Comics, official product from the Orville, the guide to the Orville. Uh, if you get the deluxe edition, it comes with a fold-out schematic of the entire ship. There are rooms on this ship that you don't even know they were able to put rooms, but they got them on the schematic. Big fold-out if you get the deluxe edition. Link in the description of this video. Dang, Laura, calm down. Child, wake up. Two of the Calavon, I don't know if I can point them out. It might be the mom. Or she might be in another scene. But two of uh, the Calavon were actually guests, uncredited guest cameos by the host of, um, what's that show called? Mythbusters. The guy and the girl host of Mythbusters, they play Calavon in this episode. Uh, let's see if I can pick up their names here. I think they're at the very top. Let me go to the very top of this page I'm looking at. Oh, they're at the bottom of the page. Hold on. I'll get it. I'll get it. Tori Balecki and Carrie Byron are Calvin aliens in this episode. And they are the hosts of uh, Mythbusters. That alien is so cool. Looks like a puffer fish, and that guy just looks like a right, like a catfish. Uh, that puffer fish guy, I can't remember the, the alien race. I think I have it written here somewhere. Um, we don't see his race again until the episode Sanctuary, directed by Jonathan Frakes. We see two of his people sitting in, in the council chamber, and then of course we see a half naked female version of that race in uh, season three. Well, that is an advanced technology. They knew, they knew, they knew to do it. Well, Brian says he would pay $35 for a Scott Grimes autograph. Uh, yeah, the show is still on Hulu. It's still a Hulu original. Um, on my Disney Plus, I have Dis I forgot I had Disney Plus because I got it uh, for like ninety nine cents or something for a whole year uh, during uh, Black Friday. It's still it's still on uh, my Disney Plus. I don't know if it's on everyone's Disney Plus. Maybe it's a a, a regional thing. They're Caliban. I wonder what that guy looks like. We are not your Shamu. So they still know what Shamu is. I don't, I don't know how many Shamus there. Well, I guess they wouldn't have a Shamu anymore. Because they wouldn't um, capture animals in the utopian future. Like the Calavon, am I right? Yes, 31 years. I think that little boy that they show is there just for a few months. The Orville fan wiki has all the information on those prisoners. Let's see here. Okay, so this episode takes place over 21 days. This whole adventure is 21 days, you guys. But I think um, Kelly and Ed were only in the prison for two nights and one day. Yeah, Akor was there for 31 years. Uh, they they took him in the year 2388. 
they captured Lurinek eight months before the episode, and Baral several weeks later, around January 24, 19. It's so cool how they got these different plot lines that are giving giving you as a viewer different um, different aspects of, of a person's uh, uh, thought process, what they're going through. Yet also, we have this really cool sci-fi thing going on with the Calvin Zoo. Why didn't Kelly spend two days and one night at the zoo? And in this episode, actually, I think it's after this scene here where she says, F it, basically says, F it, let's go save our people. And the crew's like, yeah, and they all start storming off to go help and, and, and join the cause. That's the exact moment I knew I love the show. I'm guessing Selene tequila is just tequila made out of Selene cactus. I wonder what it would taste like though. <laughs> now this is how we know alara now of course in the previous episode she had no eyebrows she had that big forehead she had a five head she might have had a six head that line you suck sir was improv by scott grimes it's not, it wasn't, they don't go off book. They don't go off script hardly at all in this show. But every once in a while, an improv will get through. And that was an improv by Scott Grimes. Right. Right here, that's the moment. Everyone's like, yeah. And they start rushing off to help. Love it. Thanks, Christine. Uh, Christina says happy birthday. Now I'll be doing my I'll be doing a live show on my birthday. I'm doing uh, the Orville Spotlight this Saturday, so it'll officially be my birthday then. But I'll take all all the birthdays. This is my birthday year, so you know I celebrate all year long. Let's see, Calavon Space, I think, only takes six minutes to get to at full quantum. I know in season three, the Orville uh, can go 15 light years per hour. It was much less in season one. Like five or six, but that's still pretty dang fast, don't you think? So I'm just looking through more facts, you guys. We need the Calamon back. They're such an interesting species. They're, they seem to be even more know-it-alls than the, than the uh, Kalon. And I don't think they used the holographic projectors enough to disguise the ship. They did it in this episode. It's great. It's early on. I think there's plenty of other times we could have used that technology. Yeah, it takes roughly six minutes, 21 seconds for the Orville to reach the USS Blariot. Oh, it's the USS Blariot? Isn't that the holographic ship? Yeah, 
I do wonder how long it took for Ed and Kelly to when they were kidnapped to when they woke up in that uh, that fake room, that fake apartment of theirs. All right, it worked. It worked. And, and yeah, the the night this episode aired on Fox uh, after the football game, the football game went into overtime, and they were afraid. Uh, the, earlier in the day, they were afraid if the game went into overtime, they would lose audience for this episode. The game did go into overtime. This episode did not air until 9 p.m. Eastern time, but it didn't affect the audience at all. This is actually, I think, the second highest rated uh, episode view-wise uh, for the season. 6.6 something million viewers. Which nowadays is a heck of a lot of viewers. 20 years ago, not so much. Everyone used to watch the same stuff back in the day. There were, they didn't have a lot, a lot of distractions. Everyone would watch the same show to get 10, 15, 20 million viewers per episode. But nowadays, six million views is a heck of a lot. She can be freaking bear if she wants to, Ed. It's all coming back to me now. And they're not miserable. They love each other. Through this whole season, through all the seasons, we we see how important these two are to each other. There is a zookeeper. There he is. He played a a big character in an episode of Star Trek. I can't remember. Was he a Klingon? One of you guys will know, I'm sure. I don't think I see it, see it on this page. This is J.B. Colum, you guys. Woof. Now, wouldn't the zookeeper know that the slain is super strong and be impressed by that? Tyler Lee, she guys stole them. They kid. Do you think that one of Ed's hobbies is going to the bathroom to read? It will be, and that's a funny line. I'll tell you why. A lot of people don't know this. Let's see here. Okay. Isn't this crazy? That's how they uh, sanitize the room. They just vaporize everything. Or I guess anything organic. Because they're not vaporizing the couch. The couch is fine, guys. Don't worry about the couch. But if any of those beams hit Ed or Kelly, stuff's going to be cut off, you guys. That doesn't look painless. <laughs> Woof. Oh yeah, the autograph cards. I had a bunch of yeah, JD Cole. I had a bunch of autograph cards from the Orville for the Written House season one cards. I ended up uh winner uh had raffles and winners gave those to winners. I had like four or five of them, right? different actors that sign cards 
they were supposed to, Rittenhouse was supposed to do season two of the Orville ca player cards. That was going to be a lot of fun to get the cards, open them up, put them together. But it never came out that I saw. But I know they worked on them. They got, okay, so he says, it says, I'm going to the, uh, I'm going to the, to the bathroom to read or the toilet to read. He said that the joke of that, besides just being hilarious and pathetic at the same time, is that's the last words of Elvis Presley. The last thing Elvis Presley said was, I'm going to read on the toilet. He never came back from that toilet, did he? The Sapphire Star is the highest reward. That star was also given to Yafit uh, after the stuff that happened in, um, oh, God, Identity Part 2. Look at Halston Sage, Alar Katan. She's the winner, you guys. They went to the bathroom to read. Annabelle says, so is it today that it's your birthday or did I miss it? Happy birth My birthday is one uh, at the end of the week, Saturday, June 22nd. I'll be one year older. Right now, I'm the same age. The day before that day, on the 21st, I'll be the same age. But the day, the next day, I'll be one year older. Which is not how days work. And I want a follow-up. We did not get a follow-up in season three of what happened to the Calavon once they were introduced to uh, reality TV. We know what this stuff has done to our society. What has it done to the Calavon society? Were they dumbed down? They're super smart, apparently. Are they still as smart? Now, that's a human zoo, that's for sure. So that was a little social commentary right there about a reality television. And here we are with uh, Bordis doing his thing, brooding a little bit. Did, were we? Were we yeah, this is... I don't think we saw Clyden in the first episode. So this is the first time we saw Cly we see Clyden. Technically, the first time we see Topa. No, oh, impossible. So you think? Now, a lot of people that watch the 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 Orville shorts that I put out that don't know the full story they're like hey i thought there were a single gendered species and uh hold on you guys i got more episodes the next episode is playing that's for next week um they're like that's dumb uh how can it be a girl single gen uh, single gendered species or they'll say there wouldn't be a male or a female it's a single gender species you wouldn't have one or the other it'd just be the one and I'm like, yeah, there's a whole thing about it in the show. It's a, it's a mystery to be solved that we find out about in just the very next episode. Uh, the Mocklin government is lying to its people. And we still haven't figured out exactly why. I mean, I got my theories. They're probably right, the theories, because they're simple theories. But that is for another day. So, you guys, command performance. What, what did this episode mean to you? To me, it was the very first, my first introduction to the love that I now have, which is full force for the Orville. The Orville universe, the Orville production, uh, uh, the Orville everything. Everything about, and I know so much more about the Orville now. I know more than everyone else, and I can't share any of that information until the end of September. Uh, but at the end of September, if you get the guide to the Orville, you will know. Uh, that information as well. Link is in the description below. It's available for pre-order. Chad Coleman from The Walking Dead. Yes, Margo B. And Chad Coleman from The Expanse. Though I love Chad's character in The Walking Dead. What was this character's name? Was it Tyrese? 
or was it originally supposed was it that in the comic book? Tyrone, Tyrese, I can't remember. Uh, but I love Chad's I love Chad's acting. Uh, he's a cool dude. I've met him, hung, hung, hung out a little bit with him. He's a great guy, very welcoming, very energetic, very animated person, uh, very happy. Um, he's got a smile on his face. He's going to put a smile on your face. But it, with his acting, I've, I've always, um, I've always just believed everything he's played because of the way he does it. He has this technique that that I've seen him use. I don't see a lot of people use it. I won't give it away. Uh, but it's with his eyes. He has a special technique that I see him use, and I think it's great. I've seen him do it in everything he's, that I've seen him in. But, you guys, we did it. And I want to thank you for joining me for this watch party. And uh, we're going to keep doing the watch parties because we have to keep people engaged with the Orville. Uh, if, if if you had access to my Twitter, to my ex, uh you would be inundated with all this wonderful Orville stuff. I see people all the time, every day, multiple times a day, say, hey, I love the Orville. I just started watching the Orville. Should I start watching the Orville? And then there's others of you out there responding to these messages and sharing these messages and giving them advice. Yes, you got to watch the Orville. We love it. Welcome to the community. Welcome to the galaxy. It's all great stuff. Let me press some buttons here. So how are you guys watch, uh, liking the watch parties? Are, are they worth doing? Because I, I would like to do it for every single episode of the Orville, at least one per week. And when things get set back up, maybe we'll start doing, uh, and, and I have more time, maybe we'll be able to start doing a couple a week. And then once we finish all of the episodes, maybe we'll start all over again from the beginning. Ryan Dawkins is having a good time. Margo's having a good time. Let me go back to my buttons here. So next next time it'll be um, the Orville season one episode three about a girl where we learn so much about the Mocklins, answer a lot of questions that were making us think, what's going on? Single ginger species? Oh, it's not true. It's a lie. And then later on we find out, oh, it's really not true. There is a lot more than one female every. Once in a generation, once every 75 years, uh, it's all the time. But they're hiding it from society. They're uh, uh, banishing anyone that doesn't fit the Mocklin mold. They're putting people in prison. They're changing their sex at birth and not telling anybody, not telling, not even them. Clyden found out he was born female when he came to the Orville. When they did a, a scan that wasn't a Mocklin biological scan, which uh, let him know that he was actually born female, and he's not happy about that. Uh, Ann Bell says, as you know, I got my best friend hooked. Now she has got her boyfriend to start watching, so he is watching it all over again. You can't watch it too many times. I can't tell you how many times I've watched uh, not just the Orville consecutively, one episode at a time, but just going back and forth through different moments of different episodes, there's certain scenes I've seen a hundred times because I'm always trying to research or find moments or answers to questions or, and, and making all these shorts that I've made. I got like a couple hundred at this point. Uh, I'm really watching scenes over and over again and uh, watching these episodes reveals scenes to me that I'm like, Oh, I never made a short of that scene. Boom. Write that down. That's something to make short of. Dex having a good time. Well, I want to thank you guys. I'm having a good time as well. We we did uh, our one hour watch party. Now the wife is home. I have to go say hello. <laughs> I haven't seen her all day, and I really like seeing her. She my she my favorite. You guys. I had to get all you know gushy and all that stuff, but she's my favorite. She put a smile on her face. So I want to thank you all for joining me. I'll see you next time. Don't forget this Saturday is not only my birthday, but we're doing the Orville Spotlight. Um, uh, interviewing an actor, a guest star from season three of the Orville, uh, the episode twice in a lifetime. Uh, she played Renee played the realty, the realty, real, realtor, the realtor, uh, that was trying to sell a home to Charlie and uh, and to uh, uh, Isaac, played by Mark Jackson, of course. And we're gonna have to talk about that. She's a huge fan of the Orville even before she got the role. 
So we're going to talk about, we're going to fan out about it. You're going to nerd out. We're going to talk about uh, the audition, getting cast, uh, doing the role, showing up on set, all that good stuff. And uh, again, thank you so much. I'll see you there. Uh, after this uh, live show, it should automatically send you to uh, the URL for that live show so you can set a reminder so you don't miss it. Otherwise, you got to watch it late and you won't have your questions in the comments for her to answer uh, if, if you're not there. But I'll see you all very soon. And as always, we all do better when we all do better together. Love you. Bye-bye.